Uh, I heard Jeremy describe how he doesn't need glasses anymore in the most recent Feel Good Friday episode. episode. And I think I know the reason. This is a really rare condition, but I have seen it once before. All right, so uh, last week, it's been one week since we sat down here and did this. It, I, whoa, a whole week. A whole week. It's been a whole week. Crazy. And uh, last week, right off the top of the show, um, aside from Brian leaving his every device on and, and as loud as possible with the dings, you got that shit on yeah. lockdown Actually, now? Yeah, I just checked. It's right, fine. Great. <laughs> great. Your watch off, your iPad off? Yeah, yeah, it's all good. Your Actually, laptop put away? He I'm also not. got so fucked up from the hot sauce. Yeah. Oh yeah, did, right. Yeah, yeah got, right. He got so fucked up from it. It wasn't hot, guys. It just it just fucked up my inside. It, it actually it actually did fuck your inside. Yeah, he did, acted actually. like such a boss. We literally yeah. I we guys, stopped, I was kind of a boss though. We right? stopped were, filming. Yeah. We stopped filming and recording. And like as soon as we stopped like so we we all had an individual chip which had an equal amount of of sauce on it, which yeah. is all it's people might have missed hot. this. Just hold on. Last week we ate chips with very hot hot sauce. That was in relation to a story we were talking about capsaicin yes. being found out to be potentially like yeah. the next big thing in painkilling. Yeah. So we 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 all had a chip. What had it had an equal amount of hot sauce on it. Brian basically was like, you know, fucking beating his chest and yeah. honking his honking his horn and and like, tugging his dick, tugging his dick. <laughs> yeah. We were like, why are you doing that, dude? And he was, was like. Man, it, it made me I, feel, I could do yeah. way more than that. And so he did way more than that. And he was like, yeah, that's totally fine. We finished recording like 10 seconds later. And then he started grabbing his stomach and he started going, oh, oh <laughs> yeah. God. I can't yeah. I, I, started, just, I started I was filming crying. him. I started I filming crying. him and he, started, and he started going, don't, don't go film this. Don't film this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't film this. <laughs> um, but also last week, um, I, I started the episode by basically explaining that I got a prescription because my eye, my left eye went shitty a few months ago. Yeah. Yeah. All, you were misdiagnosed. Yeah. I mean, well, well, we're about to get to this. <laughs> okay. So, are we? so my eyes got better out of nowhere, which is very, which doesn't make any sense to me. And so I put out a call to ophthalmologists, optometrists, anyone who works with eyes to submit a letter at letters at sickboypodcast.com. Mm-hmm. Right, and I saw the email, and like we were getting flooded. There must have been thirteen thousand because we were we were guessing how many we had a, ophthalmologists listened to Sick Boy, and and uh, we thought somewhere enough, somewhere around a, forty thousand. <laughs> oddly enough, not a single ophthalmologist or optometrist <laughs> wrote in, but we did have someone write in that does have some experience. Mm-hmm. So this is coming from Liam, and Liam, thank you for sending this. Uh, I find this to be very interesting. I haven't heard this yet. Yeah, so I told e- both of you not to read it. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, answer to Jeremy's eye problem. Hi, guys. Long-time listener here. I've been on board since the exploding eye episode number five or something. Damn, way back. I'm not an optometrist or an ophthalmologist, but I am a certified ophthalmatic, sorry, ophthalmic technician. Uh, I heard Jeremy describe how he doesn't need glasses anymore in the most recent Feel Good Friday episode, and I think I know the reason. This is a really rare condition, but I have seen it once before. The person seemed to have gone from needing glasses to having good vision almost overnight. Obviously, this is quite unusual and was quite shocking for them. There were some other strange symptoms as well, including, this is very interesting, increased muscle tone, sticky palms and fingertips, and the ability to shoot webs from his wrists. In this case, the cause was determined to be a radioactive spider bite. And the patient went on to save New York a handful of times. Not a bad prognosis. Very interesting. Now, I'm not a doctor, as I said, but I did notice on Jeremy's Instagram the other day that he woke up to a giant spider sitting on the ceiling above his head. Well, I did see that post. Yeah. Yep. And actually, we'll throw to that post right here. Four years old. Just woke up to this beautiful thing. Jesus. The fuck do I do? Now, all of a sudden, doesn't need glasses anymore. Quite the coincidence. I think Jeremy should go to the nearest tall building and attempt to scale it to confirm this diagnosis. Wow. Hope this helps. All the best, Liam. Wow. Yeah. And wow. guys, guys, <laughs> check this out. That is remarkable. 
Oh, whoa. Oh, yeah, dude. That is some increased muscle definition. Because like a few weeks ago, you looked, uh, you looked, uh, man, have you been going to CrossFit? Those pot lights are doing you a whole bunch of favors. How sweaty are your palms right now? (laughs) Guys, I did that so hard. I ripped the thing out of my headphones. (laughs) Oh, God. Uh, For those who uh, weren't watching this on YouTube, Jared just literally, uh, my muscle Took tone his, is nuts right now. He's got off. muscle tone. Yeah. He's got muscle tone in his stomach, almost like I do on my thighs. Yeah. So, yeah. So, anyway. Because um, I bike. So, fucking, <laughs> I don't fucking know, man. It's like, like. Have you noticed, have your hands been, like, sticky? Dude, I picked up a, I, earlier today, I picked up a bubbly. Mm. Couldn't let the fucker go. We just kept trying, like, mm. like, right now. I fucking, and then, and let, then me you, see, let me see and if I can pull it off. And we were standing. And we were actually standing near a woman. Oh shit, dude, that's sad. And, and Jer oh, was, and Jer started, and Jer started aggressively sh- shaking, shaking, and shaking. And then, and then yeah. it did come off. And mm. when it came off, it hit the poor woman in the head. And now I killed her. Didn't mean to. <laughs> we should cut this part out. We should. Yeah. What, what, it's a five minutes in, five minutes fifty seconds. We'll cut this. Okay. Out. Yeah. Right. Um, anyway, anyway wanna, thanks, Liam. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I don't know. I don't fucking know what's going on, but I got, I mean, getting bitten by a ray, I, I, the spider, I mean, you saw from that video, that spider was really big. He was the largest really, spider. Really, really big. It literally, it looked like a GMO spider. It, it thought, it looked like, it looked like the, a spider that, you know, we would have encountered in the Brazilian Amazon. Yeah, I had to look it up. I actually looked up, um, well, I looked up brown recluse before I captured it. What's a, a brown recluse? Brown is a recluse, type of spider? Brown recluse is a spider that if you get bit by one, you're okay. going to have a bad day. Oh, yeah, actually, okay. you might not have a next day. You just have, that's your last day? And it's, bad. Yeah, those and it's are, bad. Uh, it's bad rest of yeah. your day. Those are usually found here in, uh, in the woods of Nova Scotia. Uh, brown recluses are actually found in North America. Okay. Oh, yeah? Yep. They are. I don't know about Nova Scotia, but they're, they're, fa- dude, I put that on my Instagram. I had people from Australia messaging me going, uh, oi mate, uh, yeah. fuck, fuck that, fuck that <laughs> shit, mate, <laughs> blimey. <laughs> and the, uh, cheerio, hope, uh, jolly good day. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit. Like even like, Australians. Why are you, you're like, that had nothing. Why are you? I thought this was about spiders. <laughs> you just keep on saying cheerio and blimey. Yeah, it Why? And also, you sound sort of possibly South African, but also maybe the English at the same yeah, time. Yeah. But <laughs> I couldn't quite pin where in Australia they were, they were from. They, but yeah, they must yeah. have been. Uh, they could have been expatriated. I think that's a New South Wales. So anyway, um, <laughs> you know, actually, if we bring that video back up, which we we will right now, do you notice how it has a tinge of glowing orange to it? Did you do that? Did did. did <laughs> That might be a radioactive spider. Uh, maybe it was. Because at was. first it looked brown, but it now did. it's glowing yeah. orange. That second time it did look yeah. The second time around it had a distinct, yeah. different look to it. Yeah, but that, I, right. Upon noticing. Upon, upon, no- upon, yeah. upon yeah, yeah. using yeah. that. Yeah. Hope you have a lot of time to work this week, Bri. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. Oh, Jesus. So anyway, folks, uh, thanks thanks for uh, thanks for joining us this week. We're really happy to be here. Liam, thank you for the message. Mm-hmm. And... Um, also, fuck you. Uh, and if anybody who actually does know anything about my fucking eyes, please tell me, please, for the love of so, God. So Liam wasn't like, ha ha, JK, you still need glasses. <laughs> like, he wasn't like, you're dumb. You definitely need glasses still. No, no, he literally, he, uh, all he said was, hope this helps. <laughs> and, and it don't. I like Liam. Uh, it, it don't. Here's a, so a couple of news stories here. Um, this one's very interesting. So I, I don't know if we talked about this on the podcast before. We definitely talked about it on my other podcast, Turn Me On. Um, do you guys know what stealthing is? No, but if you talked oh. about it on Turn Me On, it sounds oh, like I, someone, risky sexual behavior. Did you just tell me about this? Someone told me about this like a couple That's, days ago. So this is very fresh in the news. I believe you actually posted this to, uh, to Slack for Feel Good Friday. California makes stealthing, or also known oh, as yes. removing condoms without consent, right. illegal. So the, the I sent that to you because I thought it'd be good for Turn Me On. Yes, uh, which which I'll definitely be talking about with Bridie. So if you want to listen to that, Turn Me On podcast, uh, check it out. Um, uh, it, so stealthing is the act of removing a condom without consent in the in the midst of sex. Mm-hmm. California is the first state in America to make this illegal. 
I'm surprised that it's not so am already I. some type of assault <laughs> or um so maybe not assault because I guess there'd have to be a disease yeah. that gets contracted as a result of it. Well, no, it, it's straight up. That, I mean, that's that's assault. Yeah. You're 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 yeah. doing something against. You're you're. It's it, non consensual I mean, it, sex. I, I was gonna say, isn't that kind of rape? Yeah, by I, definition. That's the that is the. I mean, that is the because you agreed to have sex with certain terms, and then those if those terms are changing, and then it's, it's no sex without consent. It. It's yeah. it's a type of yeah. sex without consent. I, so I think I think rape might. I mean, like you're kind. Of, I think you might be going like, into. There's definitely it's definitely a whole bunch of shades of not okay. Yes, but rape yeah. is a very strong. Yeah. Yeah, so, totally so that's, that's so, non-consensual sex. Right? If you, it's, I, it's, it's I, like you, rape adjacent. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's definitely, it's definitely, yeah. you well, you def- it's, it's obviously legally not yes. rape because, because they made this rule. So it's obviously legally not that, but I'm saying, isn't that what it is? In, it's in it, essence, it, it, it is probably, non-consensual, it probably needs its own sex. legal term, yeah. which well, will probably come from this. Stealthing, stealthing. Is, stealthing. stealthing is the term. <laughs> there you go. And this this came to the the forefront of um of a lot of people's minds a, a, a few years back in 2017, I believe. And this must have been when we talked about it on Turn Me On. It was um through a through a master's thesis piece. I don't I don't have the information in front of me of who wrote it, but basically this woman wrote about this and uh did kind of a nationwide study and there was stealthing was like a, a big problem. And so this started the conversation and there was a um, there was a politician in California who bes- just after reading this, put this motion forward to make this illegal. Uh, California became the first state making stealthing the act of removing a condom without consent during intercourse illegal after governor Gavin Newsom signed a bill into law on Thursday. The bill amends the state's civil definition of sexual battery, making stealthing a civil offense and giving victims the grounds to sue their assailants for damages. Okay, so you so it's can't not go a criminal to criminal charge. You can't go to jail for stealthing, but you can you can definitely get sued and and uh, uh, you know th- there's legal action. That I, can I wonder be if place. I wonder if there I wonder if there could be criminal action if you were to pass on. Uh, Pro- like, yeah. pass on like yeah, whatever, I wonder. gonorrhea or whatever. Yeah. I'm just really bummed that they use stealthing because like, you know, now I feel like it's I'm he, running at a, a risk of like, like say I'm playing paintball with my friends and I'm like, um, guys, I'm going to be stealthing up on these guys. Then like, I feel like I'm, I'm like now using a term st- that, that potentially could like yes. get me you canceled. Could, and you're like, such you an should, avid well, paintball player that that's a really <laughs> high risk <laughs> scenario for you. You also <laughs> should just say, I'm going to be stealthy. Yeah, right. these yes. guys. I think that yeah. I think that stealthing. I mean, now, 2021, we're we're constantly talking about language, like yeah. in so in yeah. social in social situations, like language, intent, the like semantics of certain things are like really important in terms of how people feel. Mm-hmm. And stealthing, I don't know. Don't you guys feel like stealthing? It's like it feels like a little bit too much, like ghosting. <laughs> and so like it sounds yeah. kind of like hip like it's got a bit of a hip like a hip sound yeah, to it's it. got a, a like but a, it ain't but a, a, but a connotation but that ain't. makes it like ha ha yeah like, do yeah, you feel that I, I feel i know what you're saying i understand that i don't know why like, like i, I feel can't, like i can't needs, understand why it feels that way i feel like it needs a more serious name yeah rape <laughs> <laughs> You, yeah. might, you might you be might right. be right. <laughs> you might be right. Stealthing <laughs> tends to go widely unreported because there are very few ways to address it legally, uh, but it is still wide, a widespread issue according to advocates and research. A study published in the National Library of Medicine in 2019, this is crazy, reported that 12% of women said that they had been a victim of stealthing. Wow. Another study that year found that 10% of men admitted to removing their condom during intercourse without their partner's consent. Wow. So it's obviously a huge problem. And don't ever do this. Like, that's just a fucking, like, it's a horrible, awful thing to do. Um, but the fact that California is the first state to make it illegal is, uh, that means that Texas, good. that means that Texas will be the first state to recommend it. <laughs> You're yeah, actually <laughs> like probably by the real. way, the laws have been going there yeah. lately. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, yeah, now, it's really now, not a good track record in reading about this. I did see that it was, they, they tried to make it illegal in New York. We love and, you, Texas. And, uh, <laughs> and, and it didn't get passed in New York, 
But now seeing that a, that a state actually has come forward and done it. Yeah, it sets a precedent. It sets a precedent. Hopefully other states start to uh, follow mm-hmm. in suit. Um, so that was one really interesting news article. Here's another fucking huge one that came out this week. Uh, the Who. The awesome who? rock band, who? but not who I'm talking about. Uh, the WHO endorses first vaccine for mm-hmm. malaria. Uh, the World Health Organization on Wednesday endorsed its first vaccine to combat the most deadly form of malaria among children in hopes of reducing the hundreds of millions of yearly fatalities among young Africans. Uh, Dude, this is... Hundreds of millions. Hundreds of millions. So this this article talked about saving um, annually just children under five. Yes. Just children under five, 25,000 kids under five in sub-Saharan Africa every year and preventing something like... 5.2 5.2 or 5.3 or 4 million cases of malaria. Mm. So wild. Every year. But how can we really trust this vaccine? I know you're joking, Brian, but <laughs> but but Jesus actually Christ. a really really not in terms of not in terms of the people that are going to benefit from this because I think that there is well we, we you know something a really good reference to this conversation would be to dig back um I can't remember the number of the episode, but we had a conversation about malaria on the episode with our friend uh, Paul, Paul, mm-hmm. who had gone to malaria and what is thought to be the ground zero for malaria developing long, 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 like before humans. Wait, did you said go- he went to he malaria? Went to malaria. Oh, sorry, he went to um, um, malaria ground zero. Yes. That, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, sure. Um, and I was like, is... Is, did they name <laughs> did the they disease name, after a they, place? Did they name, <laughs> or did they name a place after the disease? Yeah. That would be really crazy. And so he goes there and he ends up getting malaria while he's there filming the documentary. He's there to make a documentary. He gets malaria while he's there. And he 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 kind of filled this in on a lot of like, I mean, there's a huge challenge with um with uh with like health education in sub-Saharan Africa. Mm-hmm. And there's, you know, there are places where there's like you know, there's like witch doctors who are, you know, saying, you know, if you, you know, take this, uh, you know, take this, this substance, that's this mixture of stuff that has like, you know, no medicinal value. Like monkey piss. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like crazy, like crazy things like that. Like this will make you feel better. And then that's at odds with like, you know, doctors and nurses and people in the community and people who are working for the UN and the Red Cross that are trying to give, you know, like accurate information on how you can prevent malaria using Mm -hmm bed nets and you know Mm. other sorts of things and what you actually need to do if you get if you get malaria um but this will be this will be a huge a huge uh a huge win for uh combating malaria but the challenge will still exist to get that information yes to the people that live there yeah because there's such a because there is a there is a gap i mean not too dissimilar to what, what, what we're, we're seeing, de- what we're dealing with yeah. right now as yeah. a global society, mm-hmm. uh, especially in Western societies yeah. with vaccine hesitancy. But again, I think it's a vocal minority too that you're talking about in that case, because I think that a lot of in people will case. be like, well, in both cases, because I think in Africa too, a lot of people will be like, oh, fuck, like this thing that's been killing yeah. family members for Hopefully. generations. Yeah. Like, yeah. The international, you can help us with this? Great. The International Health Organization recommended that children living in areas with moderate to high transmission of specifically P. Fal- uh, falciparum malaria receive four doses on a schedule once they are five months old to prevent the disease. Uh, the WHO Director General Tedros uh, Ghebreyesus called the announcement a historic moment, saying the vaccine manufactured by British company GlaxoSmithKline could save tens of thousands of children's lives. A couple of interesting facts about malaria here. Malaria is, if you didn't know, a life-threatening disease caused by parasites that are transmitted to people through the bites of infected female anopheles, mosquitoes, and it is preventable and curable. Um, Now, interesting here, parasites. Ivermectin, maybe they should just be giving them ivermectin. (laughs) Who knows? Um, uh, guys, in 2019, we have- uh, there were an estimated... Two, this is fucking crazy. In 2019, there were an estimated 229 million cases of malaria worldwide. How many? 229 million. 
The estimated number of malaria deaths stood at 409,000 in 2019. So just, you know, just shy of 500,000, shy of a, a half a million. Year. In the year? In the year 2019. Whoa. Children aged under five years are the most vulnerable group affected by malaria. In 2019, they accounted for 67%. That is 274,000 of all malaria deaths. Fuck. 274,000 children under the age of five died from malaria in just 2019. Wow. The P. falciparum uh, parasite is the most prevalent form of malaria on the African continent and is considered a primary cause of childhood illness and death, specifically in sub-Saharan, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. They go on to say every year more than 260,000 African children younger than five die. Was it, was it Dr. Damn. Pai who was talking to us about uh, malaria yeah. and T- mm-hmm. TB, TB and, uh, yeah. and, and how that was going to be affected by COVID-19? Well, they were affected. We were, were talking to them. How it was, yeah. they, were, they had already been drastically affected, especially in areas like India and Sub-Saharan Africa and places where, where continued efforts on those things like TB in Canada, like, you know, if TB research or, you know, or, or, you know, treatment of TB, you know, slows down in Canada, like, you know, whatever TB, not a, not really a thing here slows down in India. Big thing, big deal, big deal. Yeah. yeah. And malaria in Africa, big deal. And, mal- <laughs> and malaria in other places as well, but sub-Saharan Africa. We should have him or uh, somebody else come on, come on and talk about this. Yeah. So we're working on that. We're actually working on getting a guest in for a routine checkup, a, a checkup episode about this new vaccine, which is, uh, you know, very, very exciting and, and truly like a historical moment. This is a, a really big deal for the world. I think that it was malaria. Malaria has killed more people in the history of human race. Yes. Than, than any, anything else. Anything mm-hmm. else, com- any other disease, infection, virus. Cause of death. Combined. Yeah. Yeah. There, the, That's it, crazy. It, there is some sort of stat like I that. Think and it's the second one was um, 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 putting things in your, in your butt. The things that people <laughs> put in their butt. Like yeah. they. Put it, yeah. Putting, putting yeah. furniture legs up your arse. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that yeah. was one <laughs> that, that like, on a pie chart of things yeah. that you put yeah. in your butt. That which is a staggering, death. which is a staggering That's stat. the biggest piece. Because, because malaria has been around for like a million years and, um, you know, coach legs have only been around for like 200. Yeah. So uh, at this, like with this trend, yeah. it's bound to yeah. pass. Yeah. Pass we need more research on that. Yeah. yeah, and it's hard to vaccine against. Um, um, super hard. It's like putting chairs in your yeah. butt hole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And, super uh, hard to yeah. find a vaccination <laughs> it, against. Now, because <laughs> people just want to put the vaccines in. They are working on, on an mRNA vaccine that will help with things up your ass. Um, <laughs> it will kill the part of your brain <laughs> that makes you want to put. Yeah, coach yeah. legs up your ass. Weirdly, a lot of anti-vaxxers are in support of that particular vaccine because <laughs> yeah, they've lost a lot of loved ones to this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, you guys want some like really good Feel Good Friday content? Fuck yeah. <laughs> uh, violinist Manami Ito lost her arm in a traffic accident and feared she would never play her violin again. And then she saw an occupational therapist and uh, it's all good. Hey, uh, <laughs> nice little uh, um, sort of preview for an upcoming episode that we have coming to you uh routine check episode, episode about occupational therapy uh no but maybe she did see one maybe uh but now thanks to a customized prosthetic this is all changing uh so manani ito is an extraordinary japanese born violinist who plays with a prosthetic arm she's 20 years old uh she tragically lost her right arm in a car accident in 2004 while studying to become a nurse and she was convinced that her days as a violinist were over After surgery, she went to collect her prosthetic arm at a facility and noticed that other people with similar disabilities were using their artificial limbs to play sports like basketball. So Ito spent hours practicing her instrument with her prosthetic arm and developed a a new unique way of playing. Check out this video. This is so fucking interesting. So you can see here, she's kind of showing folks first how her chest movements are actually the thing that affect the way that the hinge on the arm works. Whoa. So now that she's shown that, she's going to like set herself up here. If you're just listening to this, highly, highly recommend go, going to check this out on, on YouTube. 
Watch this. This is so cool. Wow. How amazing is that? Whoa. She I mean, the, the she other playing that song from Pocahontas. What's that I, song? I don't know. Colors not, of the Wind. I'm not sure. Is that no. what it's called? No, I love Colors of the Wind. It's the not thing, that it sounds thing, like it. The thing that I love about this is like not only is she playing the violin with this prosthetic, she's playing it so well. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It's like she's really nailing it. Um, wow. So to use Humans her, are incredible. To use her prosthetic to play, uh -oh. Ito has a harness. Guys, the dogs are the awake. The dogs are awake. This, this could be bad. Uh, to use her prosthetic to play, Ito has a harness and cable attached around her left shoulder, allowing that shoulder to control all of her movement. She also has a customized prosthetic bow to allow her to play with more precision, which she describes as, a light, as lightweight and cool. And I don't think she means cool to the touch. I think she means... <laughs> Very yeah. cool. I gathered that. <laughs> fucking cool. Uh, but here's the other fucking crazy thing about this woman. As well as traveling around Japan, sharing her passion for music, the nurse has also become a Paralympian swimmer, coming fourth in the 100-meter breaststroke at the 2008 Beijing Paralympics no. and eighth at the 2012 London Paralympics. What? This is just an all-around high achiever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you just... Sometimes. Big time. Sometimes some people just can't get enough, you know. <laughs> Save some for the rest of us. Am I right? <laughs> Am I right? <clears throat> right. Yeah, pretty good shit. Uh, I loved. I so that was um, that was uh, actually shared with us uh, via our Discord. Uh, our lovely Patreon community is now contributing to some of the uh, the shit that we're covering mm -hmm. on the show mm -hmm. this week. And uh, speaking of. Speaking of uh, folks on our Discord, oh yeah, uh, I got to hang out with a couple people, a couple of our patrons uh, this past weekend. Oh, yeah, just chatting with them, two of them on Discord, Megs and Sadie, and uh, and Sadie was actually coming to visit Megs in Ottawa because they started dating, dude. I because they met love, on our on our Patreon. I love that. It's Isn't so that crazy? It's so, it's so fantastic. I anyway, hope they get married and have kids. Yeah, me too. It's very much like and name the kid Jeremy. Jeremy. Jeremy the King. It's like Jeremy Brian yeah. Taylor. Yeah. Or just as one name. Yeah, yeah. J or Daddy. Dry yeah. uh dr uh dry nailer. Yes. Yeah. Dry, dry, yeah. dry nailer. Yeah. That yeah. makes a lot of sense. <laughs> um, it's very much like when when we opened the yoga studio uh in 2010, like when you started to see people who started coming to yoga and then they became friends, and then they were like, hey, we're gonna go and like we're gonna go and like take a trip with each other. Like you know, we're we're like we're best friends now because we started coming to yoga. And you're just like, oh, that's so cool that like inadvertently we made this thing, and then that allowed these other people to like come together and realize that they have a friendship together. And I didn't I I didn't listen to the single thing you were saying because I was trying to come up with another name that in my head that <laughs> combines all. T t uh, uh, <laughs> I feel so valued. <laughs> Tamara me Ian. Taylor, I was That's listening to you. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. And uh, and but but then it was like for me because Sadie was Braille coming. Braille or from, me. <laughs> Sadie yes. was coming Nailed Braille or me. from New York. That's good. That's a good one. To Ottawa. And I just happened to be in Ottawa at the same time. So um we were trying we were both only there for a couple of days and we were trying to figure out if we we could meet up. This is and I was cool. at a family Thanksgiving cottage weekend. And I was telling the family, there was like 20 people there. I was like, so guys, fat, listen, Brian. I was like, listen, I, I got to go meet a couple of my friends. I'm going to be gone for an hour. And they're like, don't, don't go for an hour. Bring you, your friends here. Did you bring your Sperry Topsiders? I did. Yes. Okay, yeah. Were sick. you drinking a PSL? Yeah. Down on the dock. Yep. You know, That's cute. And, uh, and anyway, Sadie and Megan came, uh, to hang out with us. Yeah. And we actually, they, they ended up staying for dinner and, the whole family loved them. It was fucking awesome. Well, uh, really here, fun. here's a here's a photo right here. You can see <laughs> of the the three of you guys hanging out. This is very sweet. They are sweet. They're super sweet, and it was it was a lot of fun. It was really nice to get to meet them in person. Oh, 
The dogs are awake. It has, it has begun. The dogs are awake. Usually we don't have both dogs here at the same time because it's a ruckus. Um, and the ruckus is about to start. Speaking of a ruckus, there is a TikTok phenomenon that has been spreading wildly that is a bit problematic. Oh, yeah. In what way? Well, you know how that... Uh, are you guys familiar with these like... Uh, you guys heard about this? Are you familiar with this? Uh, these TikTok uh, fads? Uh, I should be, but I, I like don't dances think I am. and stuff. I no, know that- no, 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 no. I'm talking about like the milk crate challenge, like oh, that kind of shit. Dude, the milk crate challenge makes me upset. Wait, what is the milk crate challenge? You don't know about the milk crate challenge? I don't I, think well, I know about the milk crate challenge. The fact that Taylor knows about the milk crate challenge and Taylor doesn't know anything about anything in the world that has anything to do with anything hip. No, and no, timely. No, no, no. no, so you <laughs> are totally mistaken. I don't Taylor's like Taylor's like if it no 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 I Ta- Taylor's observe. like if this didn't show up in my morning financial report Taylor's I have a, no idea what it is. Taylor's a social media hey, cuck. Hey, you know he what? He likes to watch. Hey, do you know how much money the milk crate challenge makes me? <laughs> <laughs> you invested uh, in a couple of This much. Creators. This much. Yeah. That's that's this much. Uh, do you know how much money the financial news makes me? Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> also, so, yeah. negative money. <laughs> I'm down 17 grand this week. Um, so the milk crate challenge, Brian, if you didn't know, it's like people stack milk crates to create a set of stairs that go up like seven milk crates high and then down the other side. So it's okay. like a tower. It's like a, a, a castle of milk crates. And the challenge is to walk up them and walk down them without falling and breaking your neck. Okay. And not many people do it successfully without breaking something. Right. And you're, that's, and that's big on TikTok, right? You're going to die when you see it. It's, it's hilarious. It's really, <laughs> it's really dumb. But then, but then there's also like, you know, there's Taylor, a fad. Did Jer show you this? Or did yeah. you just, I you saw just, this all on my own. Just in, <laughs> just in the world. But then there's also like these weird fads that like young kids were getting into. And this wasn't TikTok specific, but like, you know, kids eating Tide Pods, you know, and like mm. fucking themselves up that way. Yeah. Don't eat Tide Pods. That's bad for you. Um, well, here's another. It's bad. It's bad. Isn't it crazy how inherently, like, like I'm thinking of uh, junior high and high school culture is of just like egging each other on to do shit that is like super bad for you, yes. and harmful in I some way. Very much well, part of that. Here is the latest fad called scalp popping. See what I did? Yeah, you like twisted it. You have to listen very qu- carefully here. I, yeah, start you know, lower, yeah, like. I wasn't close enough to the scalp. Oh my God, I'm scared of you. Listen. You like flyaways are on the way. Okay. Ready? Yeah, sure. Ready? Yeah, go. <laughs> she just ripped like watch like a like hundred. No, nope. right nope. it wasn't ripping the hair. Listen, listen, quiet. I do not like this. Listen. <laughs> I like twisted. No. Listen. You know what this is like? Watch. Oh no. <laughs> what is that? You know what that's like? It's like gleeking. You know? It's like this a, is, it's this far sounds, different than gleeking. It I mean, sounds I mean it's as useless as gleeking. See, the way that they're like laughing about that, I can already tell that this is something that is actually just not good for you. So what 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 is going on? Uh so this is a doctor that uh made a made a post about this the uh, this this TikTok fad. What the hell is going on here? This is called scalp popping, and this is where you pull the hair so hard that you pop the galia off of the skull, creating this popping sound. And this is a barber doing this. So what is happening here is the galia is this tough, fibrous sheet of connective tissue oh. that extends over the cranium forming the middle layer of the scalp. I'm too old for this, dude. I'm 31 now. <laughs> and apparently there are a number Can't. of dangers associated with scalp popping. Can't. So firstly, you can easily tear the inside of the scalp, which can lead to bleeding and possible infections, which can become sore and extremely uncomfortable. <laughs> it can also cause damage to the hair follicle on a long-term basis, which could lead to hair loss. And then, of course, there's also the risk of uh, neck and head damage from like the force of the hair being Guys, pulled. I have a question for you. Whoever, how did the idea that high school are the best years of your lives ever get any fucking traction? Like, how did that idea ever escape 
like the one person who ignor- said it. Because ing- ignorance is bliss, dude. I think that's where that <laughs> no. comes from. Like it's, they're quite literally the worst years of your life. The worst. Because you're the you're because you're the your dumbest high school, you're gonna be. Your high, your high school <laughs> yeah. years are the reason why uh, are the are the reason why you pass out at a fire <laughs> and why you're fucking losing your hair. As a woman like, at the age of twenty eight, yeah. you're you're I, the I, dumbest I, version of your fully mobile self. Yeah. Like you you have like yeah. full motor function, but you're the yeah. dumbest version of you with full motor function. Yeah, it's like my my dog Rupert. Now that he's getting bigger, his legs are really long, and when he's running through the woods, he's just running into trees because yeah. he's like now he can run fast because he's got the muscles to do it, and he's the size that he can start to do that. But he has no capability. No, no, so, no. so this this practice of scalp popping, and then um, he like, and then he and then he starts popping his <laughs> scalp, and I'm like, what are you doing? Robert? This this practice of scalp popping, although is like a fad on on TikTok right now with young young kids, it's actually in South American communities. Um, they have embraced scalp pop, scalp popping for years. It's also referred to as chukaki, a little too close to bukaki. Um, super close. and and it's 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 a long time uh it's been regarded as a long time method of of a remedy for headaches so uh uh quote oh, just one second here as i oh, just hold on. Uh, <laughs> uh quote this technique was much practiced in my family my mother and my aunts were ex- experts in pulling hair they would pull on each other's hair when they had headaches uh wrote a South American um, to Newsweek um, named Brian uh, Correza, quote, I remember that people would often come to our house and have their hair pulled. Almost always it seemed they were on the edge of fainting from pain. They would say that they had taken a lot of medicine or pills and that the pain would not go away. Their last option was to come to our house and as you might expect, they went away feeling very grateful for having their pain alleviated uh, for being cured of it. Now, did a little bit of digging. Uh, there hasn't been much research done into scalp popping as a as a remedy for headaches. This is all. This is all. That's not very surprising. Uh, <laughs> this is all um, anecdotal. Uh, anecdotal. Thank you. Um, uh, so so can't really speak to that. Although the the dangers associated with it don't really seem like it makes it worth it. But I was thinking this is kind of fun. This would be kind of fun. My hair's too short. Oh, you uh, guys want to do a scalp popping? Challenge I was going to say, the- we, would you try it? Would I try it? Yeah. No. <laughs> no no would you try it fuck no dude no. not because i'm right, fine here would you guys want to do it try it to me no come, because come do you want it. me to do it I'll yeah, because yeah, yeah, because yeah. you before you even actually told wait me, no no no, this, no 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 don't yeah, do, yeah, do that. it and wait before you do bride just come st- stand just stand up i'm gonna take my hands and you take a big breath in and i'm gonna i'm gonna put my hands around your, the sides of your neck and push in because i heard that makes you pass out let's try that <laughs> you want to do it here we go no, don't actually do it though. I'm, I'm afraid. I don't. I don't want my fucking galia no, to pop. But but think about it. Before me, the doctor even explained what happened, I was like, oh, I can tell exactly what's going on there. Something is becoming disconnected <laughs> yeah, yeah, from the yeah, other yeah, thing yeah, that yeah, it yeah. should be connected to. Because you know to. what yeah. things have your become soul. disconnected? <laughs> your soul's being disconnected from your fucking. <laughs> you, you know yeah. what? The, you guys yeah. know what the sound of disconnection is. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's right? the sound of disconnection. So when you look at that, you go, oh, whatever they're doing, <laughs> not even good. though they're laughing about it, it's not good for you. Ain't good. Uh, Absolutely not. But now, <laughs> um, you know, TikTok really serves as a uh, as an educational tool because so many other kids will see that and go, oh, we shouldn't do that. <laughs> Fair right? That's exactly yeah. how that that's works. How, that's how it works. Uh, yeah, I thought that was really interesting. So we'll, uh, uh, we'll see, we'll see what happens here. Maybe, uh, maybe there'll be some, um, I hope it fades as quickly as the milk crate challenge did. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully. I want to see a video of the milk crate challenge. Dude, don't worry. <laughs> I'll really, show you. You really it's, don't. It's dude. You know what you, where you would have seen, do you follow drunk people doing things? Yeah. Like any of those accounts, like they, like you would have seen it. But you would what it would have looked like. It just would have looked like somebody standing on a bunch of crates and cracking their their back <laughs> on a you know breaking yeah. their breaking their uh, tail. You know what? I, I to be honest, when I was younger, I uh, stuck my finger in a milk crate. Um, I don't know. I was actually because I because now I know I have ADHD and I was uh, fidgeting a lot and I was sitting on a milk crate and using it as a stool. And I was just kind of like playing with the edge of it with my hand, and I stuck my finger in mm-hmm. in the hole, and it got stuck. And uh, we put a ton of 
Vaseline on it and I had to pull it off and it like basically like degloved my the skin on my finger. Oh, yeah. That's the same technique that you use when you get your finger stuck in another hole that uh, I'll tell you about when we're off air. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, this has to do with the... Talk about the asshole. Yeah, the, the same as the couch like thing. Yeah. 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 Um, so this is, uh, moving along, this is really fun. Uh, we had a past guest uh, and also a listener of the show, Jenny, uh, who was on the show to talk about... Um, I can't remember. You don't remember what Jenny was talking about? She had, she had a crazy type of asthma... Asthma, yes, yeah. It was like it was like death asthma, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. What she, was yeah. the term for it though? It was like a, it was like a, um, it was like a very like really like on the nose term though, wasn't it? There was, yeah, yep. But she also talked about her uh, her accessible <laughs> tour company, yeah, <laughs> her accessible tour company that she was running in in, right. in Australia. That's right. Uh, she <laughs> had uh, asthma that was so severe. That uh, it was it was really bad, really bad asthma. Brittle asthma is Brittle what it was called. Asthma. And I knew that yeah. the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. we could tell that you did. Yeah. yeah. We actually, were, and Brian yeah. and I were searching for I the didn't word. have to look See, that up on my computer don't here while ask, we were talking. Don't ask me what people on the show <laughs> had. Ask me what their names were. If you said <laughs> the brittle asthma <laughs> Irish girl, I would have been like Jenny. Duh. We know um, this. We know this. So Jenny <laughs> was really uh Jenny was going to make you a birthday gift, Bri, which was a portrait did, yeah. of your dog and you. But then she went on to also make one for you, for Taylor, for myself. And we'll show you here. Um, and there for are, the now, there, now deceased Lauren. Yeah, so here's, uh, uh, here's the painting that she made of me. This is actual, an actual photo of me the first day that I was holding Donut. That's so good. Isn't that so good? It's, it's really so cool good. to see my tattoos... Um, like like redone yeah. in someone else's art. Yeah, your dog is definitely second fiddle to your tattoos in this. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Here's a picture of Loki Taylor with a bone. Oh my god, that is, really is that a good. bone or is that a? Did he chew off someone's dick? That's a bone. That's a bone. <laughs> it could be a dick, but I think it's yeah. a bone. Here is uh, Brian with uh, with Ruber who <laughs> looks very chonky. <laughs> Ruber he does. Was, he was Ruber's a really fat. chonky baby. Also, I gotta yeah. say, Brian, the hat you're wearing literally could not be a- any smaller. That is uh, the, it, it, or it could not be any bigger. Look at yeah, that. Look yeah, at yeah. it. Like you're on the very last button of that. Hat. I, I think, you know, it's funny is I have that hat, I think is on the second or oh, yeah. last <laughs> really? button. I That's, think it's a kid's hat. To okay. Be yeah. That makes sense. I got it when I was golfing and I needed something to wear on the course. And yeah. then Jenny also made a photo of uh, Lauren's pussy. <laughs> wow, I never knew go. that that's what Lauren's pussy looked like. <laughs> yeah. That's so Lauren's crazy. pussy looks like it has a third eye. It, is, uh, it does. That is really accurate. Yeah. So that was really nice. Thank you, Jenny. Um, and that was very sweet of you. And we love, I, I mean, over the years, we've gotten a number of uh, pieces of art and, and, um, and gifts from fans. And we, we appreciate all of you for sending that in. It really does mean the world to us. Um, and with that, uh, let's, let's wrap shit up. I'm, I'm going to go right into a letter. We got some uh, listener mail. Do it. And uh, this is uh, coming from a listener named Jen. Uh, they went on to say, hey, guys. Just listened to the most recent endometriosis episode and wanted to chime in with my personal experience. That was uh, this week's episode mm-hmm. from Yanay. It sounds like Yanay is in the middle of a frustrating and painful journey, but I wanted to make sure that she and other people who might be going through a similar thing doesn't get the feeling that there is no hope for recovery. Mm. I was diagnosed with endo about 10 years after a terrible flare up led to daily severe abdominal pain outside of my regular cycles. It took months before I was able to get in to see a gynecologist at the IWK, which is here in Halifax, and I had to advocate for myself when the doctor dismissed my symptoms and suggested we wait another three months before scheduling a surgery. When I was already in so much pain, I was taking the maximum dose of painkillers with little effect. In the end, it was 10 months from when the daily pain started to when I finally had my surgery which would have been over a year had I not insisted they schedule it when they did. But after the laparoscopy and ablation of the extensive endometriosis found throughout my abdominal cavity, I had instant relief of my symptoms and have been mostly pain-free for the last decade. I'm not sure about the current treatment for endometriosis or whether the treatment is moving away from ablation, but I wanted to let any other sufferers out there know that ablation therapy can work and you won't necessarily need to have yearly surgeries, as was mentioned on the podcast. 
Mm. Also, I was able to conceive without any major problems. Not sure how much the surgery helped with that. And had two successful pregnancies with no endo-related symptoms. Wow. It's currently a chronic condition, and I'm starting to have some possible recurrence now, but I'm hopeful I'll be able to get on top of it before it gets as bad as it was before. Just wanted to give a different perspective, as it sounds like Yane has been hearing a lot of horror stories. Unfortunately, yeah. the people who have great success and then go on to live their lives aren't typically the ones joining those communities online. So I'm sure that skews the perspective. Mm -hmm. This is a really good point. Yep. Yeah. Thanks a lot. I always enjoy hearing other people's experiences with these things, even when they don't quite match my own. Hope to hear lots more conversations soon. Jen. Thank you for that, Jen. Uh, very kind of you to send that in. And uh, again, we love getting letters, even when they don't tell me exactly what the fuck's going on with my eyes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> but if you were to get one that told you exactly what the fuck is going on, you'd preach. Very much appreciate it. I thought you got that letter, though. Didn't we? Isn't that how this whole letter, this whole podcast started off today with that letter that told you exactly what was going on with your eyes? He didn't tell me what happened. He just told me why that it's yeah. likely it, that right. it's because the, the radioactive spider bit me. Right. That doesn't mm -hmm. fucking tell me why. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. So, okay. Good. I, like, I thanks for the good. info. Uh, whatever. And to I, be like, fair, I'm, he really just focused for a long time on the the new symptoms that you're you're living with. And he right? was also focusing on this other fucking guy who who also got bit by the radioactive spider right. and was like saving New York. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. He was really projecting. He was projecting on you this other guy's experience that could be what is happening to you right now. I don't want to say Halifax. Yeah, yeah. I don't either. Hey, listen. You know. You don't. You don't always get to choose. Yeah, with great power comes, comes great responsibility. responsibility. Yes. So. <laughs> oh, folks! Thanks for listening. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. We love coming at you every Friday, Wednesday, and Monday. That's right. I said it backwards. And uh, we will be back next uh, Monday. We've got some really fucking sweet conversations in the pipeline. So excited for y'all to hear them. Um, and, uh, if you're listening on Apple podcast, leave us a rating or review. Um, would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, Spotify, just hit the follow button. And of course, if you're watching on YouTube, so good to see you. Hope you're having a great day. We love hanging out with you every single Friday. Uh, make sure you hit subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you know when we're putting episodes up and you can see our dogs. Look at this. They're oh both sharing the fucking table right <laughs> now. A, Boys, just, oh, that was oh, so good for a second. Uh, the it's a dog over. party. Don't okay. knock over the cameras. Uh, it, thanks again, folks. Really, really appreciate it. And you know, we've got we get that we got that letter from Jen uh, in, in reference to an episode that we just dropped about endometriosis. But we have <clears throat> we literally have hundreds of episodes about any number of conditions out there that someone might end up living with. And your experience with that, although there are always going to be probably similarities if you have the same condition or even like an adjacent condition, you gotta, you're going to have your experience. And if you want to tell us about that experience, you can do it in two different ways. You can do it the way that Jen did it by sending us a letter to letters at sickboypodcast.com or mm -hmm. you could go to sickboypodcast.com slash contact and fill out the guest form if you want to be a guest on the show. So mm -hmm. two, different, two different ways that you can go about doing that. We love both of them. Thank you for doing that. And the other thing you can obviously do is uh, send us your artwork, uh, just like our, our pal Jenny with asthma did. Yeah. And uh, yeah. yeah, we love getting your art, so feel free to do that. You can either Fan art is very fun. It's the best. It's, yeah, it's the nice. best. Yeah. And you can either send it to the same email address that Tiller did, or you can uh, write us and we'll, and we'll give you, we'll give you our, our mailing address and you can send it there too. Uh, I mean, yeah, dep yeah, yeah, depending. Depending on who you are. We're not just going to willy-nilly give that. Yeah. We, might vet, <laughs> we might vet you for a, we might do some vetting, but. If you seem like a a serial killer, then uh, we'll we'll consider it. Yeah, if we're getting if we're getting uh, SK vibes, we're gonna probably dial it back on the specific yeah. address. But whatever. but uh, yeah, you can have like uh, Jer's personal address instead. Yep. Uh, so anyway, that's uh, that's it for this week. Thanks to uh, everybody who makes this show happen. Uh, Taylor, Jer, I love doing this with you. Lauren, um, we miss you. Please come back. We're nothing without you. Please, please, please. Uh, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff, sorry that the I just the cut to the camera that the, that the dogs were just <laughs> slamming into. Jeff, sorry that the show has come to this. Uh, Richard Coyne, thanks for the theme music. And 
and to all the other folks who make the show happen. Thanks. That is it for this week, folks. I'm Brian. I'm Taylor. And I'm Jeremy. And this is Sick Boy.